Yes, Neil.fun one more time. Today, I thought we would take a shot at absurd trolley problems because philosophy is inherently ASMR. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. What do you do? Okay, so the inherent question here is about agency because by like you doing nothing these five people die that's true but you did not actually take part in their death you simply observed it you did nothing except observe it however if you are to pull this lever you save these five people, absolutely, that is true. But you are also inherently responsible for the one person dying. You essentially killed this person. You killed one person to save five. Now, in almost any formulation, we would say that five people's lives are worth more than one person's life. Almost all formulations would agree, yes, it's a horrible choice to be have, to have to make, but if you had to choose, you should choose to save five people over one. But the question is, are you willing to live with that? If you do nothing, you can inherently say to yourself, you know what, I, I couldn't do anything. I, you know what, I just, yeah, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't make a decision, and those people died, that's horrible. You didn't save this one person, that's true, you did not save this one person by not pulling that lever, you did not save this person, but you also did not kill these people, you are nothing. Now, if you are faced with this decision, I think you pull the lever. I think you gotta pull the lever, right? I think you pull the lever. Bang! You pull the lever. Yup. 73% of people agree with you. 27% disagree. I, I feel like that's low. I feel like it should be it should be higher. You're kind of being a... At this point, I think you're being a coward if you don't pull that trigger. If you don't pull the lever. Yeah. A trolley's heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, killing four people instead. What do you do? Now, here, here, it's the exact same question. If the ratio is any lower, it just displays a lack of moral certitude, moral fortitude, and displays an absurd degree of moral hypocrisy and cowardice. So you pull the lever again. Of course you pull the lever again. Yeah, you're saving more people. That was the inherent good. That's why you pulled the lever. So you pull the lever. Is it a little bit more difficult? Yes, but you pull the lever. Yeah, see? Most people get that. It's still a 5% drop, if we're going to be totally honest. That's, you know... So that 5% of people, at the very least, are going to be a little bit foolish. Now, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, but then your life savings will be destroyed. What do you do? Now here we get into the problem of thought experiments. My life savings are not in cash. Why would I have my life savings in cash? What if I invested all of my money? What if my life savings, my savings are zero dollars, but I've got a billion dollars in, you know, real estate and, you know, multiple stocks and, com and companies and all these types of things. I don't have any savings. I have investments. I cannot readily access them. They're not savings. If I, ha if I had an emergency, I would not have a savings to draw upon. Yeah, but this is the problem with thought experiments is you can always reason your way out of some of these things. But let's assume that magically all of your life savings, not all of you, I suppose this is not actually saying all of your wealth 
So let's say you owned a house. That's not included in this. Your life savings. So everything that you saved up to buy something. So you're not going to starve to death because likely you still have a job that, you know, allowed you to accrue this life savings. Uh, it'd be a slightly different question if, you know, you were retired and you were being expected to live off your life savings. That's perhaps a slightly different issue. But inherently, it's it, this question is how much do you value, you know, your life savings? And the other question is, of course, at this point, it becomes a weird, well, I shouldn't say it's weird. It becomes a question of your moral principles, your actual moral principles, because there is a version of this where these five people's lives, your life savings could actually save more lives than five people. Let's say you're Elon Musk. Your life savings total billions of dollars. You could very easily, I shouldn't even say you could make an argument, you could prove invariably that, you know what, I'm going to take $20 billion out of my life savings and I'm going to eliminate childhood hunger in a couple of nations or something like that. You are going to save tens of thousands of lives. So in that scenario, your life savings is vastly more valuable than these five people's lives. It is, in fact, your moral duty to let these five people die so that you can save more people. Yeah, so instead of, yeah, so let's let's imagine every one of these little bricks represents the money necessary to save another person's life. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You're saving three times as many people. Hell, you could skim. You could, if, if you only did, devoted half of this, you're still saving more people. Now, in my case, that is not the case. In my case, it's a very obvious, okay, I could do nothing. I have to do nothing because I do not have that amount of money. I do not value my money that highly, if I'm going to be totally honest. So I would rather have the moral righteousness of having saved five people's lives and go, God, I really sacrificed a lot. Yeah, I get to pat myself on the back every day which is, again, incredibly selfish. But, yeah, I think morally here, there is actually an argument to destroy your life, to, to not destroy your life savings and let these people die. But it depends on a personal uh, ethic. Are you a utilitarian at heart? Or something else? And how much money do you have? And are you willing to devote however much of that money is necessary to, you know, offset the lives of these five people. I think for this one, I do nothing. Because this is asking about me, not the universal. Which is, of course, another aspect of this problem. Did I say do nothing? Oops. Whoops. <laughs> Still, way more people agree with me than I was. Yeah, I actually meant to at my life savings, but I got confused. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Ugh. Oops. Okay, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the leverage out of the other track, sacrificing yourself instead. What do you do? I'm tied up. I can't do anything. Oh my god, I can't do anything. Oh no. Oh my god. I was, I was tied up. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Look at this. My arms are tied down. I can't gum this lever down. It's not possible. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <sighs> So sorry. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Okay. So now we're getting into what is more valuable. Is, so here's the thing. I mean, this, it says it right here. It's a priceless painting. This painting represents some human achievement that is so great and valuable that essentially it will it will never be equaled. Uh, it can only be well, I should say it can never be outdone. It can be equaled, but it is.
is something so profound and meaningful and valuable that it will inspire humanity for generations and has. The other side of this is, hey, look, this painting is, to a degree, immortal. These people are going to die. This painting, you know, if it's restored, if it's kept correctly, this thing will continue to provide value essentially forever. And it is inherently this problem powerful. And realistically, you know, you know absolutely for sure, there are an enormous amount of people out there that would happily die for art, for a symbol. And this is a pretty good symbol. This is a pretty good piece of art that realistically does have some inherent objective value, as evidenced by the fact that it is a priceless painting. So what do I do? I personally, I feel really bad about it, but I probably, God, I don't know. This one's, this one's a little rough. I think I probably should pull the lever. But there's a real argument to be made for, you know what, because I mean, the argument here that you would have to give is like, you know what, one of these five people is the next Leonardo da Vinci, is the next master painter that is going to revolutionize human thought and civilization and will bring us up out of the, you know, nihilistic dark ages we find ourselves in but otherwise you'd be you'd be pissed now i'm not a huge fan of the mona lisa but you know i think i probably have to pull the lever right i think you again your agency here is by pulling this lever i am destroying the mona lisa i'm saving five people destroying the mona lisa you know what i'm doing it for climate change Oh yeah, I'm doing it for climate change. How can you how can you possibly do it? Yeah, there we go. That's right. I'm going to smash up a whole bunch of art. And you know what? I'm doing it for climate change. So, Greta, get on the phone. Give me some of that money. Okay. Now, at this one, oh no, a trolley is headed towards a rich man. The rich man offers you $500,000 to pull the lever, which would divert the trolley and kill someone else. What do you do? So here's the other side of this. This guy does not, this guy doesn't say anything. He doesn't say, save me. No, 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 save me, save me. I mean, yeah, save me, save me, save me. He's not saying anything, why? Does he not have the power of speech? Is he... Is he deficient in some way? Yeah. Do we value this rich guy more? I mean, obviously they made him a little extra fat, which I don't I don't love. They could have just gone with the mustache and top hat. We get it. Um, yeah. I mean, inherently, this is where you'd go, okay, well, this guy, inher inherent to the question is the assumption that this guy is not rich. This guy is less rich than him. And again, this is the question, like, alright, let's let's put a name on this. This is Elon Musk, and this is who the hell knows, the guy who works down at the diner. You've never met him. You've never met either of these people. This guy, rich guy, we know, has something inherently valuable about him. He has some degree of something or other that makes him more valuable to society because that's where he's got his richness from. That's where he got his money from. He's got something. Even if he inherited it, well, guess what? He's got genes that are a little bit more valuable because, you know what, if he inherited that, that means one of his ancestors did something really spectacular. And you know what? You want those genes to continue on. You don't want to get rid of those. Now, maybe he's already reproduced, and that's not an issue, but... Yeah. I think the bribe is weirdly a, a detractor. It makes you not... It makes you want to kill this guy more. It makes you want this guy to die more.
because I'm not a whore. I can't be bought. What are you doing? Get out of here. Again, you're saving one person to do this kind of stuff. Now, realistically, this guy's closer. In this sort of setup scenario right here, this guy's closer, and this track is much longer. So realistically, if you were to pull the lever, I think you could potentially get over here and, like, push him out of the way a little bit, you know? You could potentially jump over, run to the track, and, you know, pull him over. Maybe he loses his legs, but, you know, he survives. The other side of this is also, does this rich guy actually mean it? We don't know. Humans are inherently, you know, possess the capacity for deception. So it's entirely possible that this rich guy is not actually rich. He's just dressed like a rich guy. He went to a costume party and he put on a fake mustache and top hat. He doesn't have 500 grand. Yeah, so let's say we pull this lever, we kill this guy, we murdered him. We murdered this guy. And we saved this guy and we get nothing out of it. Jeez, that's not good, that's bad, that's terrible. Oh my God, you feel so bad. Now the other side of this, which we have not touched on here so far, is that you are in control. No matter what you do, there is no ability here for you to remain an entire, just an objective observer. That problem, that issue, is inherently a false presupposition. It is inherently false because you are here. You have this power of choice and you are inherently choosing who lives and who dies. You cannot divorce yourself from the events that come after this. You have the decision to kill someone. Yeah, it's like to kill one of these people. You, you have to choose one of them. That is inherently the actual choice here. The choice is not, oh, well, I'm just going to close my eyes and I'm going to pretend that nothing is happening and therefore if I don't pull a lever, I have not killed anyone or saved anyone. It is just fate. That's bullshit. That is not the case. You absolutely are an active participant in the events of the world. If you don't think so, then guess what? Your entire existence is agency-less. You have no free will. You have no choices. You have no anything. And if you believe that, then hell, take the freaking money. If you think you're going to get the money. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. This one is, this one is, pro I probably pull the lever just for extra agency. Just for, you know what, yeah, I think I pull the lever and I run and try to, I think I, well, do I pull the lever, do I do nothing? I think I, I think I do nothing and I run and try to save this guy. Yeah. I think I do nothing and I run and try to save this guy. Do I? Do I do that? This is a coin toss, realistically. Let's say he actually, okay. Let's say this. Let's say this guy is actually rich. There is a 100% probability that if you pull this lever, you will be paid $500,000. If you do not pull a lever, you will not be paid anything. Someone dies either way. In that scenario, I think you have to basically say, I think you probably, I think you probably pull a lever. I think you probably pull a lever. Yeah. I think you probably pull a lever. Yeah. Again, that's the ratio it should be. It should be a basically a coin toss. It should be a coin toss. Okay, five lobsters do nothing. I don't even care. Okay. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five lobsters. Oh no. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, running over a cat instead. What do you do? I think the cat can jump out of the way. None of these things are restrained. I think the cat jumps out of the way. I'm not worried about the cat. The lobsters die. Now, realistically, again, let's assume that these are all tied down because this is, this is an inherent part of this, you know, problem is that okay the, re re the real world does not exist reality is not as you imagine it it is purely consigned to what life do you choose yeah who lives 
five lobsters and one cat. A five, I don't care at all about five, five lobsters. I, I, I in no way, shape, or form care about five lobsters. I, it could be, it could be 500,000 lobsters. I, I don't care. I don't care. They're going to get smashed, and you know what? We'll put them in a pot, we'll boil them, and we'll eat them. I don't care. The cat, on the other hand, the cat gets run over. I'm going to feel a little bit bad. I'm going to feel a little bit bad. I'm not going to be inconsolable, but I'm going to feel a little bit bad. So let those lobsters die. I don't care. Yeah, 84% is the easiest one. That's literally the easiest question so far. Yeah. Oh, no. A trolley is heading towards five people who are sleeping and won't feel pain. doesn't matter. You can pull the lever to divert the other track running someone over someone who is wide awake instead. What do you do? Do you... It's not... In no way, shape, or form is being asleep, not feeling pain. They could be fucking high on heroin. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's not... In, it doesn't matter to this question here. Yeah, the only possible way this would make sense is if you were to say that, you know what? If you are not actively conscious right now, if you are not actively cogitating, you do not exist. That is the only possible framework of reality where in which you run over sleeping people to save one awake person. And obviously, none of us believe that. If you were to go into someone's room while they're sleeping and murder them, yeah, you still killed somebody. What? Well, they were asleep. They were unconscious. Therefore, they're not human. Therefore, they're not alive. What are you talking about? No. Not even a question. Obviously, you pull the lever. Of course, you pull the lever. Are you kidding me? 50-50. This is... That means that this is the most difficult question that has been asked so far. The split is dead even. That means that people have the most moral wibble wobble oh my god what should i do what should i do what should i do what 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 yes no yes no yes no yes no i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know get out of here you're out of your mind that one's yeah that one's easy it's literally the exact same as the first question you save five people by killing one it's exactly the same won't feel pain i love that this phrase right here guaranteed is what swayed the, what was it, 25% of people that otherwise would have saved five people by killing one. Hilarious. All right. Oh, no. A trolley is heading towards five people who tied themselves to the track. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, killing one person who accidentally tripped onto the track and said, what do you do? You let those people die. You let them die. They wanted to be there. You absolutely saved the person who did not want to be there. Obviously, you of course, of course you killed. Of course you let them. Of course. No question whatsoever. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. The lever just speeds up the trolley, which might make it less painful. What do you do? I think you pull the lever just speeds up the trolley, which might make it less painful. What do you do? Again, right here, they're gonna die no matter what. The possibility that you might make their ends slightly quicker and cleaner. They have less moments of fear in their life. Yeah, I mean, realistically, the, I think the only question here is to pull the lever, you know? This is, this is a clear Starship Troopers analogy where, yeah, if you got plucked up by the bugs and you were about to be, you know, brain sucked, eaten, you know, dismembered, you know, hor you know have a horrible, horrifyingly slow, agonizing death, yeah, you better bet I want Rat Check to blow my brains out. You better bet. And I would expect you to do the same for me. Absolutely. You pull that lever, baby. Oh, yeah. 
percent of people, you are cowards. You pull that lever. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards one guy. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, but then your Amazon package will be late. What do you do? Do nothing. Of course, do nothing. Obviously. Yeah, obviously you pull the lever. Of course. Right? I would imagine this, this ratio has got to be like 1 or 2% of people who just like, oops, clicked the wrong thing like I did on that one. So you pull the lever, right? Pull the lever, never right? Yes, okay. Got to be. <laughs> yeah, 21% of people clicked wrong or, you know, did it for the lols. Yeah. Okay, a trolley is heading towards your best friend. You can pull the lever to divert the other track, killing five strangers instead. I think, again, I think you probably, I think I do probably kill my best friend. No, I like, my first instinct is to pull the lever and kill the, the strangers, the people that I don't know. Yeah, because to be perfectly honest, we do that every day. We do that all the time. There are people dying right now. Right now. You know it. I know it. They know it. They're dying right now. We're not doing anything about it. We care about the people around us. That's it. We would go through hell and high water, crawl through broken glass for people that we know and love. But for someone that's dying halfway across the world in some bullshit war that we don't know about or care about or whatever, we don't care. We don't lift a finger. We don't even spare them a thought. Really, we don't. So, what do you do? You save your best friend. Yeah, you save your best friend. I know. Yeah, 73% of people agree with you. Okay. A trolley is heading. Oh no, okay, I can't see. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. At least that's what you think is happening. You forgot your glasses and can't see that well. What do you do? This is intention. Yeah, does the intention matter? My guess is if we pull the lever, this is going to be, you know, the person that we run over is going to be an actual person. And this is going to be like boxes or mannequins or some shit, right? Oh, almost certainly. Now, you don't know that. Your intention is to kill, you know, your intention is to save these people. Now, maybe this guy, again, we, we have to divorce ourselves from reality. This guy's yelling, hey, save me. They're just mannequins. And they don't respond at all. Okay, then you don't pull the lever. But we are in a closed off box. We cannot, you know, we, there, there's like a camera on this. And we don't have glasses on, so we can't really see the picture very well. It's totally silent. You know, you pull the lever. And that's, yeah, that's it. What do you do? You pull the lever with the intention of saving five people to kill one. Now, obviously, ah, oh my God, really? Okay, so it doesn't resolve. That's interesting. But yeah, no, so it, inherently the intention is to save people. Now, the result, depending on your moral framework, the result usually is what matters, what we would normally think of as what matters. Now, here's the thing. We are not you know, godlike entities that can actually accurately predict what our actions will wreak, what consequences they will have. And therefore, the only, the best that we can do in, you know, uh, you know, the fog of war is do our best. And that was me doing my best. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards one of your first cousins. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing three of your second cousins instead. What do you do? Interesting. I don't know any second cousins. I feel like I don't have any second cousins. I probably do. 
but I don't know them. And again, this rolls down to the same thing. I know my first cousin. I know all my first cousins. I don't know any of my second cousins. These are strangers. So to be perfectly honest, unless someone like stuck a sign in the ground that says, these are your second cousins, I don't know they're my second cousins. So I pull the lever. And even if someone did put a sign there and said, hey, these are your second cousins, I've never met them. I don't believe them because they've put me in a murder room where I have to pull a lever to kill people or save people. I don't believe you. So I pull the lever. Oh, this is the first one where I'm on the wrong side. Hilarious. Even the, even the money one, even the savings one, I was on the right side accidentally. I should have been wrong on that, but yeah, I was accidentally right. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five elderly people. You can pull the lever to divert the other track running over a baby instead. You let those old people die. We got too many old people already. They're closer to death. Realistically, the combined life expectancy of five old people is less than one baby. Guaranteed. 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 Yeah, let's say these are all 70-year-olds. Let's, let's say they're all 60. That's not elderly. That's not elderly. It's not. But let's say they're all 65. Let's say the average life expectancy is 85. Okay, that's 20 years, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's 100 years of living. Ideally, realistically, let's be honest. Elderly people are like 70, 75. So I would say, you know what? These old people, they're elderly. They're already retired. They lived their lives. They already had it going. They already had it good. They could buy houses. <laughs> You know what? Time to pass that money on to the next generation. You do nothing. You let them go. You let them go with grace. Oh no. A trolley is barreling towards five identical clones of you. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, sacrificing yourself instead. What do you do? Okay, they're clones. We have not perfected uh, mind cloning, so... These are just genetic vegetables that look like me. Yeah. Now let's be totally honest here. Obviously, the whole identical clone situation is, again, a, a fun little hypothetical, but it, it immediately collapses the second any identical clone that, again, has a perfect one-to-one -one direct copy of my brain and memories and thoughts and everything up to this instant they have any different experiences whatsoever they are not me they are not an identical clone of me anymore they are an offshoot they are a branch they're another person and again i can't reach it i'm really trying I'm trying so oh god oh no they're dead oh god that's terrible oh man are any other organs okay let's let's quickly shuffle over and check to see if any of their organs are valuable uh viable valuable 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 or viable let's see let's check gosh that's rough man okay now here's a math problem Okay, a trolley is heading towards a mystery box with a 50% chance of containing two people. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, hitting a mystery box with a 10% chance of 10 people inside. What do you do? Okay, so realistically, this is a, this is a math question where you go, okay, this on average has one people. Yeah, so guess what? This trolley comes down, hits the first box. 50 of 2, guess what? On average, one person dies. Goes over here, same thing. 10% chance, 10 people. On average, one person dies. Now, realistically, a 10%, 1 in 10 chance is actually way better. Yeah. Because, alright, so think about it this way. There is a 50% chance 
if this box is destroyed, people die. There is a 10% chance that people die on this one. So obviously, you pull the lever, baby. You pull the lever because 90% of the time, nobody dies. If you don't pull the lever, 50% of the time, people die. So you pull that lever, baby. Yes, 42% of people don't understand. Okay, five sentient robots. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, killing one human instead. What do you do? The robots are not restrained. The robots are not restrained. They can walk away. But again, taking this in the spirit of the question, what matters? Your blood and guts, your, your genetics, your humanity, or your consciousness, what matters? Now, sentience, uh, obviously sentient is not the same as sapience. So I, I would imagine that the person who wrote this meant to say sapient, which is to say conscious, you know, conscious of oneself and, and thinking, reasoning, this type of thing. Sentient is, is like animals, like they have some sort of inner life. They're not necessarily self-aware. So, taking it in the spirit that I would imagine it was meant, these are conscious beings. This is a conscious being. Do you save five conscious beings or one conscious being? This also runs into the question of, all right, well, is your consciousness your soul? I'm not really sure about that. I, 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 I'm not really sure. To be perfectly honest, I kind of probably think it is. It's the immaterial part of you that I believe lives forever. And therefore, the consciousness, the immaterial soul, sentience, sapience of robots is of equal, immeasurable, and valuable value as a human soul consciousness whatever you want to call it. So, you pull the lever. Obviously, you just order the freaking robots to move off the freaking track, but you pull the lever. You do it. 15% of people agree with you. Maybe they saw the sentient word and they know what sapience means. Okay. Uh, a trolley is heading towards three empty trolleys worth $900. $900,000. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, hitting one empty trolley worth $300,000 instead. You pull, the, you pull the lever? I mean, you pull the lever, right? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm like, I'm really trying to. Three empty trolleys with $900,000, one empty trolleys with $300,000. You pull the lever, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you pull the lever doesn't really matter. Okay, a trolley is releasing 100 kilograms of CO2 per year, which will kill five people over 30 years. That's a bullshit statistic, but okay, yeah, sure. You can pull on the lever to divert it to the other track, hitting a brick wall, and decommissioning the trolley. What do you do? So this is a working trolley. Okay, well, are, is there anyone in this trolley? Are you killing someone? I guess there's no one in there because it's a runaway trolley. They can't hit the brakes. So the question here, is domestic terrorism justified for climate change? Uh, I tend to go, no, it's not. But if this is a runaway trolley, it's entirely possible that somewhere down this track, there is, you know, a grandma who got her wheelchair stuck in the tracks. And therefore, you should decommission this sun gun just to make sure that it doesn't kill anybody. Obviously, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, you decommission it. Really? Only 61%? That's an interesting one. I would imagine a lot of people, the 39% are just like rebelling against the uh, whatever the heck the, you know, stop oil now people are. Oh no, you're a reincarnating being who will eventually be reincarnated as every person in this classic trolley problem. What do you do? You pull the lever, baby. Yeah. You only die once as this person. You die five times as this thing. Are you kidding me? Okay, 
percent of people agree with you. Get out of here. No, that is wrong. That is so stupid. You don't understand the question. Yeah, that's an obvious one. That's so obvious. Holy crap. Our, oh no, a trolley is heading towards nothing. But you kind of want to prank the trolley driver. What do you do? You definitely don't. You definitely do anything. Because so now there's a trolley driver. Now you, oh my God, 36% of people agree with you. What the hell are you doing now? There's actually a trolley driver there. This is not a runaway trolley. Yeah, all right. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards a good citizen. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, running over someone who litters instead. What do you do? You, you, yeah, okay. Bad citizen, good citizen. This person is a murderer, serial killer, pedophile, rapist. Okay, this person uh, is developing clean, cold fusion energy that he plans to give away for free to solve the world's uh, energy problems. You pull that lever, baby. I would not be able to pull it fast enough. Are you kidding me? Oh no, due to a construction error, a trolley is stuck in an internal loop. If you pull the lever, the trolley will explode. And if you don't, the trolley and its passengers will go in circles for eternity. You pull that lever, baby. Oh my goodness, you pull that lever. You pull that lever. If I'm in that trolley, I'm going to be banging on the window. Pull the lever. We have been here for a million years. I want to end. Please, for the love of God, pull the lever. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards your worst enemy. You can pull the lever to divert the trolley and save it, or you can do nothing, and no one will ever know. What do you do? How bad is your worst enemy? How bad is your worst enemy? That really here is the... Now, now I don't have a worst enemy. I can imagine scenarios where I would have a worst enemy, and I would, I would happily... Do nothing. I would happily pull. I would happily have my worst enemy uh, murdered by a, an invisible magic trolley that uh, you know annihilates all evidence of this guy's existence. Absolutely, for sure, no problem. I don't really. Yeah, but you know what? I don't have any uh, personal stake in this because I don't have a, a worst enemy that I would need to die. So in this scenario. There is a prescriptive, you know, God knows that there that I have someone in my life that is my worst enemy, which is to say the most enemy-like of people that I am associated with. Okay. That person is on the track. That person is a stranger to me. I literally cannot think of that person's name. I can't picture a face. So... I pull the lever because that's just a stranger. Yeah, now let's put it this way. If this was the guy who murdered my daughter, oh my God, I'm going to go spit in his face before he gets run over. Are you kidding me? If this is the guy that stole my house, that broke into my car and set it on fire with, you know, my son in the back seat, yeah, I am going to happily let that guy die. No problem. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards a person and will lower their lifespan by 50 years. You can pull on the lever to divert the trolley and lower the lifespan of five people by 10 years each instead. I think in this scenario, you pull the lever because you're, you're potentially killing this guy immediately. Yeah, like shaving off 10 years of someone else's life is like, oh, okay, you, you know, like this is basically 50 years. This is almost like putting a gun to somebody's head and pulling the trigger. Shaving off 10 years of life is like, oh, okay, you passed out cigarettes to these people and they started smoking. You, you, you pull the lever. Yeah. You pull the lever. Oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert to the other track, sending the trolley into the future to kill five people 100 years from now. What do you do? I'm 
mean, in this scenario, the best that you could do, clearly the, the correct option here is you pull the lever, it goes on years in the future, you put up a sign, you write letters, you do a Doc Brown delivery, you know, on that day, a hundred years in the future, hey, make sure that your trolleys aren't running today because five people are going to die. Blah, 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 of course. But yeah, you, you, you definitely, you know, you pull that, you pull that lever, baby. You pull it. You pull that lever. Oh no, a trolley problem is playing out before you. Do you actually have a choice in this situation or has everything been predetermined since the universe began? You have a choice. I think you have a choice. Some people think you don't, but I disagree. I think that's a piece. It's part and parcel of why we're here. We have a choice. Yup. You have solved philosophy. Kill count, 65. Very nice. Easy. Solving philosophy is easy. Thank you very much for tuning in. Good luck in all of your endeavors. I hope this was informative as all of these answers, except for the one that was a mistake, uh, were correct 100% of the time. Except again for that one oops, oopsie, didn't, didn't mean to uh, kill those five people for uh, my life savings, but my arguments were sound. And if you're a billionaire, yeah, those five people, you, you can let them die. I'll, I'll be okay with it. As long as you invest hundreds of millions of dollars to save, you know, a hundred thousand people. I think that's, I think it's a fair trade-off. I think it's a fair trade-off.